Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Everything. And I remember this from the Monday Night Wars. It's like, I would talk to people from each side. And, like, we knew everything that was going on because we watched all the shows. But, like, they had no idea what was going on elsewhere. It's like, or even on their own show. It was like they showed up and they had their thing they had to do. And then they had to go out there and they had to do it. And then they had to come back. And it's like, you know, they didn't know anything that was going on. And I think with, with Vince, when you think about how many hours of TV that he did and how many segments of TV... And all those years that he was, like, busy doing his segments while other things were going on, I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that, like, he's not even lying about. He just doesn't remember. I mean, I'm not Vince, obviously, but I've done a lot of shows, like 12,000 shows, and I'll go to these things and people will say, hey, remember when you did this on this show? It's like, I don't remember that at all. Like, I remember certain things, you know, the Gold Boat and Charmel and, you know, various... I don't even remember Christmas shows all that well for other reasons. But the fact is, like, <laughs> there's so much stuff that people go back and they listen to and they bring it up. I don't remember any part of this. So there's obviously some things going on where Vince has created this character for himself. And he's telling this these stories because that's what he wants you to know about him or think about him or whatever. But there's also a lot of stuff that this dude, flat out, he don't remember. He doesn't remember doing it. He doesn't remember the circumstances. Nothing. And then he gets embarrassed when they show footage of it. Anyway, we'll be back. Uh, get Mike thoughts if he's seen it after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So, what have you seen, Mike? I have not seen anything yet. Wow. I've seen a, uh, I saw about four, was it four or five? reviews yesterday by people talking about it all kind of saying the same thing which was if you were familiar with a lot of this documentary and the story like a lot of people that are listening to us right now or are watching us there's nothing revelatory really on it especially if you read the uh abraham josephine reisman book as far as his youth goes there's really not much that's going to be new there but what i got from people not only from those reviews but from other people that have watched it and that i've been corresponding with for people that don't know the story or are just relatively casual wrestling fans a lot of this is going to probably open their eyes because they don't really know the pattern Maybe they know about Chris Benoit or Owen Hart or this or that, but it doesn't really, you know, strike them. And they're, you know, they're what people were telling me was, you know, for those people that really don't know the depth and the layer of these stories and his personality, it is going to be somewhat relevant, relevatory to them. But at some point, I will probably watch it. From what I've heard, there's nothing that makes me want to go and get Netflix and jump into this thing right now. But something you brought up before the break, talking about Vince and his past, and since he was the one being involved in a lot of this stuff, there was up on the front page of the site, I guess Bill Simmons did a podcast with Oh, David I'll Schumacher. get to that later. Okay, where he does talk about one line item out of that thing was there were people there to remind Vince about his past and to update him and to try to a team of people that would say, no, well, Vince, this is this. And, you know, to give him, I guess, the timeline. So that's what I, I saw in the article I have. And I'm, I'm kind of interested in hearing the podcast because for what Simmons had to go through, for what Shoemaker had to go through, for what you know, the, the Tiger King producer, I forget that gentleman's name, Chris Smith, you know, that's almost as interesting to me as any of the stuff in the doc, because just everything getting turned upside down and the having Netflix then be a suitor for SmackDown and all of those moving parts that were going on towards the end of the documentary that I'm really interested in. Bill Simmons said it was certainly the strangest documentary process I've ever been involved with. I don't think Vince, it sounds so weird to say, I'm not sure Vince knew what it meant to do the documentary. I'm not sure that he knew what story he wanted to tell. 
This was uh, Shoemaker. I don't know if he knows who he is enough to tell the story. Even when he was eager, he wasn't there on time or on the days he was supposed to be there. He always had people with him. There was always people kind of lingering in the background, making sure nothing weird happened, reminding him of things in the past. There was always a team. And then... Let's see. Chris Smith, the entire production team, have done so many documentaries. They've been working in this world forever. This guy that did the Tiger King, none of them had ever experienced a working situation like we encountered in Connecticut. We would show up to shoot, and then just all day long be getting updates from Vince's secretary about his ETA. Six hours, eight hours before the shoot, pushing it back an hour, pushing it back another hour. He would roll in at 11 p.m., pitch black, with his little crew around him, and shake everybody's hand. It was such a bizarre situation. We had four hours of Vince's interview on the cutting room floor because he sounded like a frog one day he didn't have a voice there was so much good material but i think the story chris and his team were able to put together was pretty amazing vince also said i don't see myself ever retiring i never understood why people stop growing when you stop growing you die some people are like i want to retire one day what are you going to do when you retire i have no sympathy for people like that so go die. This was before he retired. Yeah, well, he didn't. Which, want to by retire. the way, before he resigned. Re yeah, there we go. Before he retired. Mm -hmm. I think we all know what happened there. Well, you know, that's a very Vince way of putting something that a lot of people believe. Once you stop doing something and you're just going to sit around, you know. You're just waiting to die. There are people with that philosophy, and Vince is certainly one with that type of philosophy. You know, a guy who's as big of a megalomaniac as he is that is cocooned in his own little world where he was able to be the puppet master for so long. You know, yeah, I he does not want to give up control or power to anyone. He never wanted to, and you see where he's at now. And we'll see what this new crisis PR company does for him. He got rid of the last one. And I believe the only thing they brought to the table was that NBC uh, column that talked about what Vince was doing and going to Italy and bringing back kittens and puppies from Turks and Caicos. You know, it has not been, they have not looked good. And some of it is the lawyers sniping back and forth. But, you know, we'll see what twist he decides to put on all of this stuff from a public relations point of view, because obviously with this new firm it, he has, they're going to be squawking and putting themselves in the mix. Yeah, he's got a new public relations firm. Strick and Company was hired five months ago to help rebuild his image in the wake of the lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant. Sounds like it didn't work. <laughs> so now he has hired Edendale Strategies as his new public relations company. So maybe I mean, it'll work better this time. As a crisis PR firm, I mean, they, I would, again, you can, maybe you only have so much to work with that you're given from, you know, the person that you're representing, but they didn't seem like they did a great job. Again, that is separate from what you think about Vince or the story or any of that sort of stuff. It's just the job they were presented to do. They weren't able to do it effectively, I don't believe. But then again, Again, when it comes to Vince, who wants to control narratives and things like that, he's probably not one to, you know, deal with people easily to get a story out there. So which public relations company told him to put out that message the other day that essentially made everybody want to watch this documentary even more yeah. because he indicated that he hated it? Yes. And from, I guess, the timeline, it seems like the new one did. You know, because uh, apparently, because there's the other story that we didn't talk about yesterday because we weren't here, was the fact that he tried to buy back the dock. Not only did he get rid of Citric well, or Scrooge and Company, but he tried to buy back the dock and then used Ari Emanuel, leaned on Ari Emanuel to try to go and get that done, which certainly, you know, again, <laughs> certainly... Well, that's honestly no surprise. What it is, yeah. Of course he was going to do that, but... And no surprise, I wonder how much he would have had to pay, because, man, they, they, this was not a cheap documentary. No. There's a lot of original music, and, I mean, they put years into this thing. So, yeah. And it would have been dead, buried, and gone, in all likelihood, until he passed away. And even then, you know, who knows what would have come from this. And, you know, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of interviews with a lot of people 
You know, if nothing else, there's a lot of stories that maybe people hadn't heard that are going to be out there and being able to be jabbed at from different points of view. Obviously, Dave Meltzer was on there and you had Shoemaker and you have other people that are there to try to combat things. So all of that footage, too, that apparently is used in this thing, it's a... I guess for a wrestling fan that does know everything, that could be very interesting too because apparently a lot of that footage isn't the stuff you always see that's clipped up and put in a lot of the retrospectives you see all the time from WWE. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.